React Casts Episode 3 React Children. We have been talking about component composition patterns. In this episode, I'll talk about React Children, which plays an important role on direct parent to child composition. I'm gonna start with this empty React project here, created with Create React App. I have this parent component that I will use to make some experiments. Right now it's kind of useless, it just receives children passed via props and render them back. Back on the app component, let's import the parent component. To get started, let's review which kind of children are allowed in a React composition. Well, in a composition, a parent component can receive no children at all, in, in which case it doesn't render anything, a string, one single element as child, or multiple elements as children. In any case, inside the parent component, all past children are available through a very specific prop, props.children. Props.children is an opaque data structure, which means we pretty much can't do anything with them except from rendering. But React provides a top-level React.children API to interact with children passed as props. The most common scenario you will come across is using React.children to guarantee the parent component receives only one single element. This is done with React.children.only and then you pass this.props.children inside. The component children now can't be empty, it can't be an array, it can even be a string. It must be an element and a single element. Now, it can be any kind of element. So if I just wrap this into a paragraph, it works. Okay, let me take a moment to refactor this using the structuring assignment. Moving on, let's try the other utility methods available in react.children. Let's begin by counting how much children were passed. In my parent component, I will call children.count. I'll do it directly in the render method to show the number of children. Let's try this on the browser. Right now it's receiving only one element, so there we go. Back to the app, if I try adding a few more paragraphs. Let's test again. Perfect. Mm, let's find a few pictures. Looking good. And wrap this on a head for, you know, good measure. Okay, two nice utilities so far. But what I think is really, really powerful in React's children is map. It's similar to how array.map works, allowing us to iterate over each child. For example, I could wrap each past child into a button. I'll create a constant here for my array of buttons. Then I'll call React's children.map passing two parameters the children prop and a function that will be used to iterate over each child. Now let me render these buttons. Let's try. As you can see, each child is now wrapped into a button. This is obviously very powerful because it gives the parent component control over how to display and how users can interact with children. Let's create a slightly more complex example. I'll create a parent component that can render its children as a slideshow. I'll start by creating a component named slideshow.js. Okay, beginning with the basics, it's just a React component that receives children as props and render them. Back on the app component, I'll import my slideshow and I'll render it passing a bunch of images just to test. Okay, it works, but the slideshow component itself is doing nothing so far. So let's get to work. The basics of a slideshow is displaying one single element at a time. So I'm gonna create a local state here to keep track of the total number of children and which child I'm currently rendering. Next, on component did mount, I'll set the initial state and use set interval to increment this value over time. I'm also going to clean this interval on component will unmount. 
The show next function that will be called on every interval will increment the current value on the state, making sure to reset it to zero if it gets bigger than the amount of children. Now that our mechanic is in place, all we need to do is actually display one single child at a time. As I mentioned before, this dot props dot children is not an array, so we can simply do something like this: this dot props dot children and pass an index. But again, React's children API comes to the rescue because it contains a true array method. I'll just call true array here and display only the child in the current slide position. And it works. It's a little too fast, so let me just change this value here. Let's test this again on the browser. There you go, a parent component that renders its children as a slideshow. This example is done, but as usual, let's take a few more minutes to make it more polished. I'll start by showing a few bullets to indicate the number of items in the slideshow. To do it quickly, I'll create a new array with the same number of positions as the number of children. Then, I'll fill all the positions with this UTF-8 open circle character. Next, I'll manually change the bullet in the current selected index for a different character. In this case, I'm going to use a closed circle. Let's try. OK, already looking better. Next, I will install and import React CSS Transition Group. If you don't know this, it's a React add-on that lets you easily perform CSS transitions when an element enters or leaves the DOM, which is exactly what we're doing here. If you want to know more about React CSS Transition Group, I'll just add a link to the documentation on the show notes. And import here. Now, React CSS Transition Group depends on CSS to work, obviously. I already have a CSS ready here, so let me just paste it. Back on my JavaScript file, I will import the CSS and wrap the children with the React CSS Transition Group component. OK, let's try again. Now we are talking. We have a parent component that is able to turn its children into a nice slideshow presentation. You just watched an episode of React Casts. This episode was proudly sponsored by Netlify. Netlify is a premium all-in-one platform for deploying and automating modern web projects. They have a very complete free plan that's worth checking out. Find more at netlify.com. See you on the next episode.